Hello everybody, this is Joe with Synapse FX. And first off, everybody over at Synapse would like to thank you for your subscriptions and your comments. Now a few of you have requested us to uh, record part two of our basic silicone mold by special effects professionals. Well that's what we're bringing to you today. You're going to learn how to properly mix up your plastic or your polyurethane, whatever you decide to pour into your mold. We're going to strap it together, we're going to pour in our liquids, and once that cures, we're going to see how that came out. So again, thank you, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. So what we're going to start with today is cleaning the mold. Use a little bit of alcohol to clean out all the grease or mold release you might have put in there when you were doing the actual molding. But what I want to start with is a rod to keep the tire iron from being flimsy, and I want to show you how to place it into the mold without it touching any of the sides and being perfectly centered. Um, if it's a shallow cavity, so your material isn't that thick, you'll end up with a tire iron that's flimsy. It'll bend, and it'll bend in your hand, and that doesn't sell very well on camera because it's moving like this, and it's supposed to be a rigid item. So let's cut to how we're going to center this rod. All right, you're not going to need a lot for this. What we're going to use is a couple of pins, a pair of dikes, some super glue. So what you want to do is find yourself a couple of needles. Um, doesn't matter what kind, they're just thin and pointy and they stick into the mold. And now, there's always a head on it, whether it's flat or round and colored or not, but you're going to want to cut that off. That's what the dikes do. There's one. I'd say two will be enough for this. I don't think you'd need three, it'll be a little overkill. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue these needles onto the rod. And what kind of glue are we using, Josh? Today we're using Sinoacrylate, or if you want to know the label, Zap a Gap. All right, and then you got some kicker over here too. Yeah, this uh, dries the glue instantly. Let's spray it. So let's take our needles and do this with one hand. So you just want to use a little bit of glue to get it stuck to the rod. After this, we'll add more to secure it. So it's on. Barely. Now let's add a little drop of glue to this to make it a little structurally sound. If you don't think it's enough, add more. It's not going to matter. It's on the inside of the prop. You'll never see this. There's a little more. Now for the next one. Just put a dot of glue on there. Come on down to the other end. Make sure it matches up with the other one. You want these things to have the same horizontal position. Okay, so that's just lightly tacked on. Everything looks good. I'm going to solidify this one in there. Oops. That's fine. Just don't glue it to the table. So now we're ready to place it in the mold. There's a couple of ways to do this. It doesn't have to be needles, but we'll show that to you in another tutorial. This is the quickest, easiest way to do it. So now the pins are glued to this, we're going to stick it into the mold. But what the point of this is to elevate it so it's not touching any of the surface of the inside of the mold. So you're going to want to find a good center point where it's not at the bottom and not at the top. And sink those needles into the silicone. Just push gently because you don't want to break the needles off. They're barely held on with that glue. So you want to just keep pushing until you feel like it's centered. And one way to check it is to go down to the side and see if it is. And I think that's just about perfect for what we need to do. It's not touching any of the sides, it's elevated. Uh, I think we're good. Now I'm going to show you how to close the mold and keep it secure for pouring. Okay, so what we're going to need is two boards and two mold straps. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one board, but we got to get the mold onto it without bending it or flexing it too much. So I like to just butt it up against the table and slide it over. It prevents it from moving. It's that easy. Now what we got to think about is lining this up in a fashion where your pour spout is accessible. Uh, it's an awkward mold in the sense of the angles, so I'm just going to keep it, you know, accessible from the side. Now that that's on there, we're going to take the other side of the mold and put it on. Make sure to line up all the keys. Make sure it's all straight and locked in tight. And that, that is looking pretty good. Now. Before I start fumbling with the mold and putting this other uh, piece of wood on, I want to get the straps into position. This is going to help us later. It's going to make it a little easier. So just lift up the board, put the strap in there pretty much where you want it. 
one at each end. And lay it down. And get your other piece of wood and put it on. Make sure they're a little parallel because when you go to stand up the mold, it'll stand. Now get your strap. See where it's at. I'm going to move it down a little bit. And we're going to close it up. Now, when you're closing the straps on these molds, you don't want, you're not trying to super strap it down. You're just trying to prevent the wood from slipping and the mold from slipping. You're not trying to create uh, a vacuum tight seal. You're just trying to lock it all tight. The mold itself already is creating the seal because it's silicone. So you want a little bit loose. Just enough to keep it together. That is plenty. That's fine. You don't want a lot of pressure. The other reason is if you put a lot of pressure on the strap and crank it down and put it as tight as you can, the silicone is going to flex and you're going to have a flat piece when you're done. So you don't want to deform the mold by putting a lot of pressure. Again, you just want to keep it in place. Now you're going to want to watch out for the pore spout when you're adjusting the strap. So I'll just kind of find a good looseness. That's a little too tight for my liking. There we go. Now we can stand it up and pour. But I don't think I'm going to stand it up. I think I'm just going to clock it up this way. I'm pouring through the spout. So today we're going to use Task Life 13. I really like this rubber for a lot of different applications. There are two types. There's Task 13 and Task 14. The difference is the cure time. Task 13 has a pot life of 3 minutes and a demold time of 20 minutes. And Task 14 offers a longer pot life of 10 minutes and a demold time of 45 minutes. So it gives me more time to stir and brush it in if you got to brush it. But Today we're just going to pour it in the mold. We don't need a long pot life. So we have a three minute cure. We're going to mix it up, drop it in, and we'll have to wait 20 minutes to get our part out, which is good when you're in a time crunch. So you never know how long it's been sitting on the shelf when you purchase it, so it's always a good idea to stir it and shake it. I prefer to stir it because you know you're accessing all the stuff at the bottom that's settled on the shelf for the past three months. So you want to get a pair of gloves. It doesn't matter if they're vinyl or latex. Right now we're using vinyl. Vinyl. They are a little harder to put on. And you're going to shake it up a little bit, get it good and shaked. And then you're going to open it up and actually get your stick in there and try and scrape the bottom and access all that stuff that's settled over the past few months. Really scrape it. Oh, look at that, I made a mess. And then after that, close it up and shake it some more. Do that to both parts. Now, you also want to be careful of cross-contamination. You can see I made a mess. There's black stuff all over my hand. And if I get that in that bottle, it's going to contaminate this bottle. I think it would be safest to just put on a new pair of gloves. Because cross-contamination could ruin your whole batch, all the money you spend, all the time you've already invested. So it's better to be safe than sorry, in this case. So now we're going to pour up the product. Um, it's kind of hard to determine how much is it going to take to fill that mold. And what you'll learn is that there are various ways to figure that out. Lots of different mathematics and techniques to do it. But I think that if you're interested in that, you should let us know so we can make a tutorial on it because it would be another 10 minute video on its own. But what we're going to do is we've already made a couple of these. We know how much it takes. So I'm going to use 130 grams total, which is... 65 of A and 65 of B. So let's get started on that. First, you got to turn on your scale. And you want to, like we said before, you want to zero out the weight of the cup. You don't want that involved. So we're at zero. And let's go. 65 grams as clean as possible. Now when you start getting close, back it off a little bit, and pour slow. Look at that magic. 
a tenth of a gram, don't think it's going to make much of a difference. So we have our part A. Now let's do our part B. Cups at zero. What I do with the second component is I add a little more weight to it. Instead of 65, I'll go to 68. Because when you pour it into the other cup, there's still going to be product on the cup, in the cup, which is weight. And you want these to be as close as possible to the right grammage. So I'm at 68.3. So I have three extra grams that I can afford to lose in the transfer of the TAS-13 into the other cup. Alright, now we're going to mix this up and pour it into the mold. The pot life on this is three minutes, so you don't want to lollygag on getting it in there. But you also don't want to get extremely messy. Now I can afford to lose a little bit of this because I weighed out extra grammage and it will take me less time than just go for it. So you want to get it mixed up nice and good. Scrape the sides. You'll notice that I have a flat stick so I can scrape the bottom of the cup. Just, it's super important to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. You don't want like half your tire iron not to be cured. Now, I'm just going to pinch the cup and get a good stream and pour it in the hole. You'll notice that I was a little concerned because the back end of this mold is elevated, but I also realized that as long as the pour spout is higher than this, it's going to reach it. And if you're worried that it's not, you can take a moment to stop pouring and stand it up so you know it gets down to the bottom of that mold. It'll also help release some air if there's any air trapped in there. Now it feels like it's already getting a little bit thicker, which could be, and that must mean that we're full. But let's give it a couple of taps on the table, see if there's any air bubbles out there that need to come out. Yeah, it dropped down a little bit. Stand it up again. Make sure there's no air bubbles. You can tap it. That'll help bring the air bubbles up. Love it. you got to love your mold. you got to love your project. Do whatever it takes. And now that that's done, you can even take your time to scrape this stuff in there, if you have room for it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And for this guy, we're just going to leave him sitting here until it's done, and then we'll open it up and show you what it should look like. So now it's time to open up the mold and see what we got. I'm going to start with uh, releasing the straps. Let's see what's in there. Look at that beauty. Now you'll see there's a little bleed on the edge. Now what we gotta do is trim up the sides and you'll have a functional piece. So I'm gonna peel this out. You wanna be a little gentle. Now you can see that the bar is right here because it's bending to that point. That's good. Come out like a dream. And now you can see it's still a little wet. See how soft that is? The TAS-13 seems to get a little more rigid than this, but you can tell there's no flexibility in the bar at all. So what we're going to do from here is trim off all this excess, and it's pretty much a done deal. You, there's really no painting to do at all. What I'll do from there is hang it and let it solidify overnight, and then we'll be able to use it. So now that this is out of the mold, you'll notice that the needles are still stuck in here. They don't always stay. Sometimes they stay in your prop, and you'll just pull them out with a pair of vice grips. But fortunate for us, it stayed in there, it's not in the mold, it's not going to hurt anybody. But no matter what, you want to take them out, whether it's in the mold or it's in the prop. So you can take it out of the mold, you'll notice it doesn't even leave a mark. So you don't have to worry about running another one and having holes in the mold. It just closes right up. It's real nice. So now to trim, there's you can either use a pair of scissors, I prefer a razor blade. Just get it right on the edge and cut it off. Um, because it's kind of a tight mold, some of this is just falling off by itself, which is good. 
But this is just to get the uh, the mass of the flashing off. Afterwards, you can go in and fine detail it with a pair of uh, nippers. Possibly even sandpaper. However, that might leave some scratches in your final prop unless you use a really fine grade. So you just kind of want to follow this down and get it all off. Voila. Pretty sloppy. Uh, but that can be all cleaned up after the fact. You just want to get the majority of it off. So once you've gotten the majority of the flashing off, you can come in with a pair of nippers and get whatever's left over to try and clean it up. A lot of this stuff will never be seen on camera because when it's used in an action shot, if you ever frame by frame an action shot, the movement's blurry. So you're not going to pick up a lot of this edge. However, if you're really worried about it, you can go in with a little sandpaper and soften it up. Or you can even fill it in with a little Cabasil and uh, Prosade, which would be another video on seaming. We're not going to get too far into seaming, but we want to let you know that as far as casting, that's the basics of it. If you have any other questions, just comment on the video and we'll get back to you and, and just type you out what you need to do if you haven't had all of your questions answered. Anyways, we thank you for watching and we'll have a new one soon. Keep in touch. I'm going to state my name and who, where I'm from. I definitely want to do that. Where I'm from. <laughs> I definitely want to do that. You should fluff out your sideburns. <laughs> I just can make them all puffy. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, everybody, instead. Yeah. Something like that. I got to start it off with something. Yeah. Hey, everybody, kind of thing. Hey. Rebel, you don't watch me. Everybody at the Synapse. Uh... Hello, everybody. I'm frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Joe with Synapse Effects. And first off, <laughs> okay, so a few of you have uh, I forgot what I was going to say You've been cut asking of the basic silicone mold by <laughs> basic silicone mold by special effects professionals okay now a few of you have had <laughs> hold on hold on can you try not to blink am I blinking way too much really <laughs> okay no it doesn't matter I'm frozen again. <laughs> Just gotta lift your hands it's up. It's getting worse hands. and worse and worse. Alright, so, uh, so do I say a few of you or to all of our subscribers? I don't know. Prolonged use of these chemicals can cause cancer and, like, really mess you up in the long run. I mean, look at me. I'm all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to redo that.